think I'm going to call it quits because I'm uh, suffocating on brat fumes in here. This is, uh, this is the oxygen of champions in here right now. Where are we at, Bremi? It looks like you've got the engine all ready to go, and I think you're almost ready for first startup. So, yeah, pretty much everything's everything's in here now. So, if this is the the first time you're you're looking at the the new uh, updated 2.0 version of this since last time, there's been uh, a couple of changes. So, the turbo is the same, intercooler radiator combo is the same, fuel tank and the pumps in there is the same, uh, engine for the most part is the same, except now it's got the semi-PP housings. That meant we had to change uh, intake manifold to suit the semi-PP uh, housing. So we've got the, the South Coast Rotary semi-PP uh, lower manifold here. The factory FD upper uh, had to remake this intercooler piping. Um, oil cool is the same. Uh, ignition system is different. So I've got MSD calls and we've got the FuelTech FT Spark 4 on there. Um, Cooling system has changed as well. So we've got uh, still got the Davies Craig thermofan. We've also got a Davies Craig uh, electric water pump down here, the, the 115, and I've, I've made a, a block off plate. Um, this is robbed arm spec because it's made out of aluminium. So instantly that means billet. Everything made out of aluminium is billet these days. So that that is um, that adds at least 500 horsepower on its own. Uh, alternator is back up here, and the, the sole reason for that is I had to alternate down the bottom before down here, and A, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass, honestly, to change plugs, uh, but the main reason was if I want to step up to a mechanical pump on this car, um, I'm not sure how crazy I want to keep on going with this car, because that, like I said before, the transmission is probably a limiting factor in this car. I don't know if I want to go methanol, even on this car, but I've got a mechanical pump and that setup puts it right, is, is down here on the side of the motor, it mounts there where I had the alternator. So I'll just move the alternator up here just to future proof it. Yeah, so it's out of the way. Yeah, already. just in case I do want to change it. It's it's now just, it's it's now honestly just a case of bolting the pump up there with a bracket and I'm done. Um, I'll probably have to move the oil cooler forward a bit because the pulley belt bolts at the front, but that's it. Um, exhaust manifolds are same, it's now wrapped in the DCI uh, performance, um, Heat stuff, stock throttle body, stock set up there. Uh, got water injection, so we've got the, the Snow Performance water injection uh, set up. We'll probably, Thank, that's thanks to Baz. Thanks Baz, yes, that's killer. Um, so what we'll probably do is, we, when we're on the dyno, we might actually run a bit of a test on how much power it can make on just E85, how much power it can make on maybe 100% water, and then how much power it can make on 50-50 water meth and then and then 100 methanol and just see what the differences are and also the challenges with tuning so um, See how we go there injectors are still the same. It's still got two deckers and four indies um, In terms of other upgrades, we've got the the new um, Gen 5 FPR 2000 turbo smart gate. Is that a Gen V? Gen V <laughs> We've got the, the Gen V um, 60 mil uh, gate here with the you can see the sensor in the top of it the, the the motion sensor there for for the valve and we've also got the other one down here that you sort of can't see the other gen v um gen 5 turbo smart blower valves so the other changes in in here are as you can see we've got ft 600 fuel tech ecu we've got the uh, ft wideband nano um the injector boss egt and the ft spark 4 so um all these together are, are great, but j just even singly, there's components. So the FT Spark is 600 millijoule um, energy, spark energy, which is incredible. So that, that's why with the water injection set up and that, you really need something with decent spark to ignite that stuff. And if we do go, when we do go methanol in this car or a car we build in the future, um, this is all future proof. So I, I won't have to upgrade this stuff uh, again. And yeah, you can see um, how great this dash looks here, so we've got that ready to go. Um, got some different buttons for trans brake and scramble boost. Made a button here for to bump it into stage. So, um, you know, so if we press the trans brake, you can either click and then that just bumps uh, the car, allows it to creep forward from the first light to the second light being um, triggered. Water injection just sitting there, but everything else on the car is pretty much as it was before. So transmission back, nothing's changed at all. Still the same um, converter, same transmission, same Hilux diff, 
Um, yeah, next step now is probably to obviously start it to make sure it all runs and it's all right. We'll run it up on the trans break and make sure everything's okay. Um, and I believe this weekend, uh, Andra Tech Inspector is coming. So I've applied for my race license. I've got the medical all done and the tech inspections hopefully this weekend. So once we get that tick of approval, uh, we can get out there and, and race at some, um, some pretty, pretty cool tracks and means we can race nationally as well. So excited, uh, to, to start that process and yeah. So one other change we've got here are these, th these actually have got giant balloons, honestly. Um, they look huge, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, so this is, <clears throat> this is a 28 by nine. So that is 28 inches tall, top to bottom, and nine inches wide uh, here. So sidewall to sidewall, they're a little bit, they're a little bit wider than that. Still the same um, crap wheel that, that we had on there, but um, this offset and this diff's like impossible to find any wheels for, even race wheels, they don't make them. So this is designed around some Falcon, whatever, run of the mill um, tire you could find. But the reason of the change for the tire um, is, I mean, yeah, great, the wider tires uh, better for traction, but the main reason is the height. So I noticed last time with the 4.3 diff gears and the auto transmission, I really probably need 4.11s or, or maybe even 3.9s if I was gonna uh, maintain the the um, the, the 26 eight and a half tire. So the easiest thing, I didn't wanna spend any money on this diff at all. Um, it's, it's not worth it. If I upgrade in the future, I wanna build, you know, I, I don't know if I'll persist with this car later on in the future. So if I'm gonna build a, a, a decent diff and a nine inch, I probably want it to be built in the next car that I build. So the easiest thing to do to change that final RPM uh, in the in top gear is just to change uh, the tire height, which changes the overall sort of ratio um, relationship. So taller tire now hopefully will give me about another 700 RPM in so the top end. So what RPM were you before? You went um, one. You went 147, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, when it, when it um, when it went 147, it was crossing it right on about um, nine. Not about 9100 RPM. Oh, was that that high? Yeah, yeah. so uh, you know, if, if I want to go faster, say I want to run like 155 mile an hour, I need a fair bit more headway. Like, I don't want to rev this thing um, to 10,000 RPM. I, I want th this isn't designed to set records. This car's always been built just as, as a fun car to be reliable. So, I really want to cross the line at, in low 9000 RPM like that was. So with this tire change, it should help me um, reach those goals of running that eight second pass yeah. and running somewhere at 150 plus um, with just changing the tire. So um, these are great. I've got to do some clearance work um, in there to make sure they fit, but pretty much this is um, this is ready to go. So I'm making a bit of a backyard, uh, backyard mechanic spec muffler system here. So the other thing I did was modify the dump pipe for the V-band on the outside. So this V-band goes here and this will run off to a really dodgy brother sort of exhaust system. Uh, so these massive mufflers. Two giant truck mufflers. So I'll run it out of this V-band here and it'll, it'll run down on the garage floor and we'll run the truck muffler um, in series. So one into another, into another section of straight pipe and then, and then out of the garage. And hopefully that takes a lot of the noise out. But basically what this means is in, instead of irate neighbors, you just have maybe pissed off neighbors. Is that right? Um, it, it's not neighbours, it's the person like seven suburbs away. <laughs> so now maybe only two suburbs away, they'll <laughs> hear me. But this thing, I mean, obviously in the garage, make sure everything's all right and make sure the tune-up's in some kind of window. So we've got it, I mean, it's the first time using a FuelTech ECU. So I just want to get a bit familiar with it before I go to the dyno. Best thing about having a trans brake and an auto transmission car is that you can actually load the transmission up and get a fair idea of the tune-up window um, while it's just sitting here on the hoist. So. I want to be able to do that. In order to do that in, in a in a home garage, um, you need to have the thing pretty quiet. I'm, I'm not, you know, respect the neighbours and that where I live out here. So um, hopefully this shuts the thing up good enough to run it for maybe say five or ten minutes. Um, probably run it for five minutes, ten minutes. Get some heat into it. Drop the fluids. Change the fluids out because the engine's full of Vaseline and, and whatnot, whatnot. And um, change all those. Put some decent fluids. Put some decent plugs in it. And then run it up on the train track a couple of times. See where we are. Tune up window and then. That's pretty much it. The next thing now is fill it with fluids and um, and yeah, start it up. So let's do that now. How are you going to... Um 
mount this exhaust system onto the carb Remy <laughs> when you race it? Uh, so that's a, that's thinking, one hell of a side pipe. I was thinking... Um, just run a big... Uh, maybe like a couple of carabiner hooks. Yeah. And, uh, and just a ratchet strap. 2570. I used to run that in my Cordia Turbo. That's, that's 80 spec turbo oil, yeah? 100%. This is larger bearing clearance engine oil. This shows you how warm it is today, but... Yeah, I know. I just thought the same thing. It doesn't even look thick. <laughs> it's, it's pouring in like if it's HPR5 or something. You just got Bluetooth throttle now. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I've taken all the other stuff on there, so I've got this big ugly bolt in here because I haven't got a shorter one yet because it was a really odd pitch thread. I think that's where the factory, um, like that sort of beeswaxy whatever pallet thing they've got in there that heats up. It's sort of a non-electronically controlled old school style of um, idle speed control. So I've removed that and then I've just got a big giant bolt in there at the moment instead. So uh, as far as I'm aware, this thing, should start now so will it be loud yes um will there be smoke yes this is a rotary so the, the, I've, i think i've run this for maybe a total of two minutes two or three minutes max mm. um which for a rotary, it still wouldn't be enough to really clean out all that Vaseline and, and crap in there probably. So there might be some of that residual left in there or whatever. And the initial startup, I've got even more premix in here. So normally I'll run for racing, um, I'll run 300 mil per, or even a bit more, maybe, um, you know, 325 mil per 20 liters. Um, street guys will run significantly less than that. Uh, if I was running methanol, I might run 350 plus. Um, but I think I've got about 350 or so in here at the moment just for extra lubrication um, while it's all bedding in. Let's hear some braps. Let's see if we can get it running. We haven't done a shed skid, we've just started up a Mazda. <laughs> and you can hear almost, you can sort of hear faintly, uh, Davies Craig water pump is working, but it's only at like, engine's only at like 40 odd degrees or whatever, so no reason for it to uh, be working at the moment anyway, but it just slightly pulses at, at, that, at that time to make sure it circulates some uh, water around the engine so it, you don't get hot spots and stuff sitting there. But this is, um, this is rotary life. This is what it's like um, dealing with uh, a rotary engine. So yes, they can be smoky, especially race ones. And yes, they're loud, uh, especially with no exhaust. Um, you might see in the US guys doing drag week and stuff like that with um, and those little Hondas that, that you would have seen, Luke, when you were at, uh, at Orlando mm. with the bonded exit um, exhaust pipes and that rotaries are just so much louder even with the turbo on it which turbo oh, yeah. is the greatest yeah. muffler you can find um these things are just loud obscenely loud to the Pist point where piston engine like a, a turbo you know six yeah. or a four you can handle not actually having earplugs in yeah yeah these, like, i mean these are bad those turbo turbo v8 to do the drag week and all that kind of stuff at idle 
they're a little bit loud, but not really. They're not obscenely mm. loud. I know this, this isn't tuned up properly, but the semi PPs don't sound that much different to a bridge port. No, well, to say really. it's just it's just overlap, and and yeah, it's not going to sound. You're not really going to be like, especially a larger bridge port. You're not going to be able to sit next to a bridge port and a semi PP and go, oh, I can definitely hear the difference because it's just engine RPM, basically idle RPM. You might hear PPs might have less mass in the flywheel and that as well, and they might be idling at. 2600 mm. rpm and 27 2800 rpm and still brapping like that at all and you can notice it but not this thing this will idle probably in around 22 or something like that in the end um the idle with the auto is a bit more difficult um because in park they might idle higher then that's the thing about the autos and that if you really love the brap sound and you want to you know mm. um, build yeah, one of these do, with the do, brap, as soon as you pull load on the engine yeah. and pull it into gear it stops brapping yeah. so um Guys that want to do Bridgeport turbos and want to go racing, but want to put autos behind them. Um, yeah, if you're getting the Bridgeport for sound, guess what? You're going to have a bad time. But another um, make a sound. update, the sticker on that roll cage. Yeah, so obviously we want to go racing and our local main track is called a park. Um, so, so that shows we that we to, have had a tech inspection. Yeah, so we had to get it uh, inspected by the the tech inspector for Android to be able to race there. So I think you can race, I could have raced this up to about like 10.99 without the inspection, but that's pretty useless considering it's already run 940s at 147. So um, we had to get that. Uh, there's a lot of conjecture in Australia around governing bodies of racetracks and stuff like that. So Android is our local one. Um, we have IHRA also in Australia. So the other major tracks up the East Coast, mainly Willow Bank and Sydney Dragway are both yeah. IHRA run. The long and the short though, we, we got it text so that we could take it to Port yeah, Park. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, don't worry about that, just go to Sydney. I don't know what other people's time yeah. is like, free time, but I work a day job. I've got a family. This is literally the last this is a, a complete hobby. Yes, it, it's fun, but um, I've got other business commitments as well that I, I do for, for, you know, for like my business. Yeah, to go to, Sydney properly, to, go to Sydney properly, it's four days. To go, yeah, to, to go to Sydney, exactly. If, I, if we want to race and say it's a test day on a Friday, a private test day at Sydney, we'd have to drive up on a Thursday, drive, race on the Friday, then drive back say, on a Saturday. So it's three days, but that's take, taking two days off my day job just to go racing. Mm -hmm. um, and... Well, so no, I, don't, I don't mind going to Sydney or anywhere, but yeah. you just got to be realistic. You can't do that every time you want to race. Yeah, once yeah. in a blue moon, that's fine. But th this is this isn't. I'm not racing here for sheep stations. I'm not racing to be number one in the world. No, I'm racing fun. For, for fun, mm. and which is why we've raced at Heathcote so many times too. Because yes, obviously the, the name of the game is to go as fast as we can. We want to go fast, but driving you know 16 hour round trip mm. to do a, a meet maybe once every six months. Uh, I'm not doing that every six weeks. That's not that's not um, that's not us. We don't have that kind of free time. So other people do, but that's the reason we got the Andra Tech because our local track is run by governed by Andra. So that's where we're going to race when we've got time. Anyway, Barumi, uh, I think I'm going to call it quits because I'm uh, suffocating on brap fumes in here. This is uh, this is the oxygen of champions in here right now. Um, I don't know what your problem is, but I can't taste it. I can't smell it anymore. Just become dead into the senses of the My after camera one. is giving me an overheating warning. My engine's not overheating because of Davies Craig water pump and pen I need a water pump on this camera. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll catch you next time, hopefully at the racetrack or the dyno. And like always, support the people who support us. <laughs>